Matt Walsh talks about where these ideas come from. And so he digs into two guys, Alfred Kinsey and John Money. Um, and I'll show you a, a, a little clip right now of, of that kind of discussion. Kinsey would be very happy with our culture today. His idea was that children are sexual from birth, that we're all inherently sexual creatures from cradle to grave. He believed that true happiness is found in a life of perverse sexual experimentation. John Money was a psychologist and professor at Johns Hopkins University. Gender ideology was his brainchild. In fact, he coined the terms gender identity and gender roles. And according to Money, babies are gender neutral at birth. And ultimately, environment determines whether a person is a man or a woman. All right, so I want to take some time right now to kind of discuss this stuff with you guys uh, of who these, who these gentlemen are, because I, I think it's very helpful. So John Money and Alfred Kinsey are central figures in our modern conversation on the supposed malleability of biology. Kinsey is a well-known sexual deviant, so I don't want to focus on him. In fact, I want to do the more fair thing. I want to focus on the guy who is more well-reputed of the two. So I want to focus on John William Money. So John Money uh, was born in 1921. He died in 2006, and he was a New Zealand psychologist. He was a sexologist and an author known for his research into sexual identity and the biology of gender. So Money found his magnum opus when he ran into the Reimer twins, two, two boys that were brought to him. So uh, Bruce Reimer was a young boy who recently went through a freak accident during his circumcision and his penis was almost entirely burnt off. When the Reimers um, experienced this, they were frantic and desperate for somebody to help. They heard about Money's research, so they took their child to him. Upon inspection, he encouraged that the baby be castrated and raised as a girl, and then gave the parents instructions, if they go through with this, never to tell this child that he was a boy. So the parents did this, they changed Bruce's name to Brenda, and then they followed his instructions. But here's the problem. They found that Brenda was not adopting very well to being raised as a girl. The parents continued to bring both of their boys to money, where he then exposed them to sexually explicit conversations at a very young age and exposed them to constant pressure, specifically on Brenda, to have surgical procedures done to him to do a vaginoplasty. And when that didn't work, he resorted to forcing them both to take off their clothes, the, the, the brother and then the other brother that was raised as a girl, taking off their clothes and filming both of these boys in sexually explicit positions with each other. This is all part of his experiment. Finally, as a last ditch effort to try to push Brenda into a vaginoplasty, um, the boy at the time was forced to sit down with money and a transsexual person who had just undergone gender reassignment surgery so that these two people could discuss this with a child. I'll show you a reenactment in a documentary the BBC did that kind of shows this scene. She was almost 13. Dr. Money made one last attempt to persuade Brenda to have a vagina constructed. The psychologist enlisted the help of a transsexual. Is there anything you'd like to ask me or anything you'd like to say? He thought that when Brenda saw someone who had voluntarily submitted to a genital operation, she would be willing to have surgery too. Some experts think that this was a reasonable course of action. So after this encounter and others, Brenda finally refused all of Money's attempts to turn this child into a girl through vaginoplasty and other medical procedures. Um, and when she finally just broke down and refused to go anymore, the parents finally broke and broke the news to, to Brenda that his name was actually Bruce and that he was born as a boy. Upon this new information, he immediately requested to convert back to becoming a boy and then was raised as a boy the rest of his life and even um, had, his, um, had a, a phallioplasty to repair what had happened to him with that circumcision. But unfortunately, the damage had been done and both boys would later on in life commit suicide. Now, here's why I share that story with you. Not because of John Money and to show you how really frightfully evil this guy was because he was an abysmal failure and people know it now. He went on to report that his findings were totally successful and of course they weren't. And Bruce, um, who later became known as David, by the way, he changed his name to David uh, Reimer. Uh, when, when he found out that, that money was still 
purporting his his experiment with these two boys to be a success, he became vocal about it and then did the documentary that I just showed you. So I don't wanna show you this just simply to undermine money. That's, that's already been done, he's a quack. But rather to show you the idea that kind of undergirds the transgender movement. And it's the idea that we can refute our nature with just the right kind of diabolical nurture. That you can touch a hot stove as it were and expect not to be burned, which in my mind is really just an indication of secularism or godless thinking, if you will. Now follow me on this, even if you don't believe in God. But if God does not exist, then there is no such thing really as nature, right? Or it's just random and science can run roughshod over it. But Jurassic Park long ago tried to tell us you screw with nature and has a bad way of coming back to bite you in the butt eventually. You can catch brand new episodes of Indie Thinker with Reed Uberman every Monday and weekly bonus episodes to keep you thinking throughout the week. But you have to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when new episodes drop. If you enjoy this content, make sure to like this video and share it with friends.